So what we do at first is we take our base coat and we pour approximately 200 milliliters into the tray, just under half. We dab a little bit on one side of the roller, a little bit again, just very lightly cover the surface of the roller with paint, not too much. I'll overload it or soak it just on the surface. We bring it up to the screen. Lay some down. Empty the roller and then in the adjacent area to clear the excess paint off. And then go back and do a finishing stroke with little or no pressure, with as little pressure as possible with the open end of the roller towards the finished part of the screen. And then reload the roller. Hmm. Making sure never to stop the roller on the surface of the screen when you're doing the finishing strokes. Merely surfacing the screen, you can stop the roller wherever you desire. But when doing the finishing strokes, you must start from over the top of the screen, run the stroke through, across to the bottom, never stopping on the screen itself. Throw it up again. A small amount, never soaking the roller, still using the surface. After rolling your first layer of base coat, what you should be doing is placing your roller in a plastic bag or some other covering of some sort to keep it uh, from drying out whilst you uh, dry your first layer of base coat. Um, this prevents you from having to clean the roller or and also save the paint that is on the roller. So what I'm doing here is um, we have a, a close-up shot here to give you an idea of, of, this, of the texture characteristic you're looking for when you're rolling a screen. You need a roller that would give you a similar texture to this. It's a very slight eggshell type of texture. What you can do is you can use a hair dryer to accelerate the drying of each coat between layers. Um, you can use the hair dryer for a screen this size to um, dry the screen in approximately five minutes and then I would suggest waiting 10 or 15 minutes to let it finish healing a bit and then you can go on to applying the next coat. As screen goo dries, you will see that its tonality will lighten up considerably and it will go matte in its uh, reflective characteristics and you will be able to tell which part is dry and which part is wet. Over there is dry, yes. Now that we're done our two layers of base coat on our screen surface, we need to pour approximately 200 milliliters of our gray top coat into our paint tray to lay down our first layer of top coat. And 
and you use the same technique to put paint on the roller as you did with the base coat. You don't over soak the roller, you just use the surface of the roller. And when you're painting the screen, you're never pressing hard enough to push the paint into the center of the roller. And this way you, you get the most use out of your paint without too much of it staying in the roller itself. We lay down our first two rows wide of our top coat. And empty the roller in an adjacent row and then we complete our finishing strokes using very little pressure on the surface of the screen. Perfect vertical strokes from top to bottom with a slight overlap. So now we're moving on to the middle of the screen using the same technique with just enough paint on the roller to do approximately two roller width rows wide on the surface. And what you want to do is make sure that you have the open end of the roller towards the finished side of the screen and the closed end of the roller towards the area that you're moving into as you're painting. The reason for this is that the open end of the roller will have slightly less pressure than the closed end of the roller in a natural fashion and the open end will feather into the adjacent layer on the finished side and this will prevent lines from forming. Once again, when you're doing the finishing stroke, you use as little pressure as possible, simply guiding the roller down the surface of the screen. Now we're finishing off our screen. Make sure that when you're going back over a finished area to try and smooth it out, make sure that the paint is no more than three to five minutes old maximum, more likely three minutes, because the water-based acrylic coating that Screen Goo is dries slightly faster than the latex its tack time comes up slightly faster and you will get more texture than you desire to have in the surface of your screen. What you're seeing right now is the wet top coat which is translucent and um, as we move into the drying top coat where it has been dried with a hair dryer you'll notice that it gets whiter and whiter and whiter looking and what's happening is, is that the ingredients inside the screen view product are draining of water and they're getting more and more scattering and more and more reflective. So they're, they're gathering light from around the room and they're scattering light into different angles. So you get a very opaque looking but light scattering surface. And what we have here is a still wet um, digital gray base coat and digital gray light top coat screen. Um, we have one dried area over here and the rest of the screen is still wet. Um, when the screen dries, the texture that you see when it is wet will shrink by a factor of four to one so there will be a lot less texture. What will happen is the surface will seal over and then the acrylic will begin to seal and dry and the water will still, have to, will still be in there. It will have to leach out through micropores in the surface of the acrylic. The acrylic will remain slightly milky because of the water and it will be at its milkiest on the second day and then it will slowly clarify. Because it is a slow setting acrylic resin, that is one of the base ingredients, it will take up to six months to fully clarify, but it will reach most of its peak performance within three weeks. Okay, notice how the tonality of this area here is much lighter, and I'm touching the surface. Um, we used a hair dryer to accelerate the drying in this area to illustrate the difference in, in tonality and light scattering. So the, the dry area scatters light, and the wet area is translucent and darker. So this will give you an idea of what you're looking for in a screen as, as it is drying. Your uh, screen goo screen is ready to view and use as a video screen once the surface has dried and lightened up and the light begins to scatter properly like this. Um, but what you'll find at that point, as I said, is it will take up to six months to dry. And enjoy the fruits of your labors. You have created on your own a world-class video screen.